Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Ultimate Emerald Dreadnoughts. It's Taskmaster Tuesday, so it's time to beat some other content creators in this time's task. Not all of them, though, because Serious Strategy Gamer is my ally. It's another one of those team tasks. Now, we're all going to be building a heavy cruiser, but there is a difference. Somebody is going to have torpedoes as their main weapon, and somebody is going to have guns as their main weapon. One team member must build a heavy cruiser with no torpedoes, but at least 15 main gun barrels on the ship. The other team member will have a maximum of 4 main gun barrels on the ship, but unlimited torpedo tubes. And uh, guess who already claimed the torpedo tubes? <laughs> From the other content creators. History Guy Gaming jumped right on that. Now, I'm going to be building a gun heavy cruiser. And when it comes to the enemy fleet, it's the United Kingdom. Uh, they're not going to have a battleship, come to think of it. The battle cruiser is worth 10 points, heavy cruiser 5. They're going to have two light cruisers for 3 points and two DDs for 2 points each. So, there are some ships to sink. And I need to have a heavy cruiser with a maximum displacement of 15,000 tons that has 15 main gun barrels. Now, seeing as I had some success recently in... Um, my other, uh, was it Sunday's video, I think, where I had a lot of guns, or yeah, I had a lot of guns on a DD. They were all firing, uh, what was it, high explosive, super heavy shells, lidite, I think. I might try that again, but the, well, it has a bit of a risk of exploding, because all of that lidite is just a surefire way to get yourself blown up. Nevertheless, it was a really interesting build, and I'm going to try that again. Hoping not to have this thing explode on me like the uh, the ship did previous. Force boilers, there's the engine efficiency that I want. Orcs, anti-torp, meh. Uh, lidite, yes. Super heavy shells, advanced turrets, autoloaders. And we're going to go for coincidence rangefinders. We're starting at 20 clicks. Maybe stereo rangefinders is a little better. And then generation 1 radar. So, main guns. Um, I have 4,000 tons and change to put 15 guns on. That's a lot. I'm going to have to go for triple turrets, otherwise I cannot even make it fit. What? Barbette's not invented here. Well, shit. Okay, in that case, we're just going to have to invent a barbette by putting it up there and there. And here. And that's 12 out of my 15 barrels. Uh, if I scoot this whole thing forward. And then scoot this thing further forward. Actually, no. Back. Here. Because that's going to bring the center of mass a bit closer. The problem is that the ship has a very heavy forward. The bow is too heavy. 1%, 0.2%. I'll take that. Some acoustics would be nice. Um, Citadel. Some anti-flood. And we're powered by oil. Is this going to be good enough? 390 ammo per gun times 15, so that should be enough. It's just that these things have to hit the destroyers, as I don't have any secondaries. Well, yet. Let's put some 5-inch on there. 5-inch guns, Mark IV, good rate of fire. Uh, decent range at 11 clicks, although good luck hitting anything that range. It's just that they don't have a lot of armor. That's going to be a problem. Anyway, here goes the lead-eyed experiment, and she's called the Urania. Let's see. That, by the way, was, for my standards, a pretty damn quick build. Normally, I can do 10, sometimes 15 minutes to do a build. This time, I think it was only 4. 
Whoa. Already 4% chance to hit? Against? The battle cruiser, assumedly. Which isn't spotting me. Ooh, that's interesting. Eight 14 inch guns. That's not something that I want to get hit by at all. Now, the only reason that you get Lidite is so you can fire high explosive at the enemy. So that's what we're going to do. Because those Lidite explosive shells, they re hit really hard. And they might hit hard enough to even do damage against the battle cruiser. Because those things have a, ben uh, a bonus of, I think it was 75% fire chance. And 35% high explosive damage. Come on, can we hit him once? I just want to see what sort of damage I'm going to be uh, expecting here. They still haven't spotted me. Excellent. They are coming my way, though. There we go. Seven. Twenty. From a partial pen. It's not terrible. And we can fire a 15-inch broadside every 18 seconds. 15 9-inch guns. Per ship. Gotta add that. Per ship. Is this gonna kill it? Um, yes, eventually. It's just gonna take its sweet time going down. At least, for now. But then again, this is the most heavily armored ship that they have. The battlecruiser. The heavy cruisers, the light cruisers, and especially the destroyers will probably need significantly less. The only reason why I might need more shells for them is because I won't hit them. That's the only consideration. 13 clicks and 12 clicks there. I really don't want to get too close to this uh, battle cruiser because those 14 inch guns can really do a number on me. They have spotted the Urania. Turn back. Damage to the main gun? Really? Wow. That's impressive. I know they hit hard, but damaging a main gun on a heavy cruiser? I'm oh, sorry, on a battle cruiser, no less. Here comes the destroyer. Once that destroyer is out of the smoke screen, I'm going to blow it up. Because they are worth two points each. And it would be nice to at least get some points in case these things do blow up. Barely any damage. Or at least it looks that way, but I think I've done 5-6% of their structural so far. And I still have loads of ammo left. <laughs> Come at me. Oh, we got identification on the enemy ships here. Destroyers. Splendid. We shall see about that. The Splendid is carrying 4-inch guns and a couple of torpedoes, which can hit me at 9 kilometers out. So, arguably, they should be able to hit me by now. But, not when you put your torpedo launcher on the stern. That makes it difficult. The light cruiser, Proserpine. 9600 tons. Minimum bulkheads. Okay, you're easy to kill. And then the heavy cruiser. That's That has to be that boy over there. Yeah. Lots of torps. Main guns. 15 8 inch guns. That can be a pretty spectacular broadside. Alright, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> firing at the Splendid. And the Splendid is not happy about that. There is some tech difference here. But then again, they have far more numbers. So my accuracy is 5.5%. And their accuracy on their main gun, on the 4-inch uh, gun on the destroyer, is a mere 2%. 0.2%. Sorry, 0.2%. So one or two... There you go. 
one or two good hits and that thing could be toast they do have a decent amount of bulkheads an anti flood three so they're very capable of getting getting rid of water but I might not give them the opportunity to do so. The light crews are still in the smoke screen, unfortunately. There's another fire on the Splendid. No damage has been done by the enemy at all. I know it's very difficult or very dangerous to say that, because the moment you start saying that, the game then goes, huh? And suddenly flash fires one of your ships. Another couple of fires. It's just the sheer destructive power of these high explosive shells. That's so nice on them. Switch fire to the Ithuriel. Because she's getting closer. And I don't like that. Chance to hit is again quite good. The battlecruiser has been fully identified. We have knocked her down to 86%. Just firing high explosive. And she has minimum bulkheads. My chance to pen at this range is about 28. Which is not that bad. There is one thing I don't like, and that's that she's heading away. Normally I'd be very much in favor of that, but... In case that we all manage to sink all the ships, the tiebreaker is going to be the time that we take. So this means that it is very much in my interest to sink these guys as quickly as possible. Now I need to turn the Pache over to starboard to avoid enemy torpedoes. I think they might have come out of the light cruiser? No, the Splendid. Great. Or should I say Splendid? Flooding. Their heavy cruiser is <laughs> ironically named Warrior, but it's not exactly posing as such. It's just holding its distance. Not doing much of anything at the moment. Come on. Have you torped yet? You have. Turn back. Crosserpine can also torp me. There's the torpedo. Turn over hard to port. Come on. All these turns are not very good for my accuracy. And they're not great for the amount of time that I'm taking to sink these guys. Battlecruiser, 16 and a half clicks out. I can hit that, but not accurately. Crosserpine. Also comes with torpedoes at a range of 9-3, so they're very, very much in range. I'm just not sure why she's not launching them yet. Hello. Ah, there you go. She just launched them. And so we continue to zig and to zag. Secondaries on this one, main guns on the processor point. Uh, let's detach. I'm not sure if you can otherwise make it... Yeah, you should be fine. Flooding. Come on, Proserpine does not have any bulkheads. Just there she goes. Just explode the hull. And she's done for. So that's one light cruiser down. That means I have at least contributed three points to the team effort. The destroyer should be soon to follow for another two points. Another big hit and she's toast. Excellent. Splendid. Splendid shall be next. And as long as I can keep the Splendid between the Urania and the Tartar, she might not try to torp me again. I'm not sure if she used port or starboard. I'm thinking it was starboard. The side that I'm currently facing. But I don't exactly know. Urania has a bit of flooding. Crap. Structural integrity is important. 
as I might need it to survive an, a prolonged slogging, 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 slogging match against the Royal Oak. Switch fire to the uh, yeah to the Tartar, because Splendid's very slow and can be finished off soon. <clears throat> she does have her torpedoes ready. Not a fan. There she goes. That flooding is probably going to do her in. Yep. Gotcha. Alright. Now we're actually going to finish off the Splendid. Score so far. Two points per light cruiser. Six plus two for one destroyer is eight. Hopefully soon to follow with for the, or by the Splendid, which will put my total score at ten. The heavy cruiser is worth five, and the battle cruiser is worth fifteen. Looks like she's not yet launching her torps, but I'm keeping a very close eye on this icon here. Yeah, toast. Oh, really? Just as the last second she launched her torpedoes. Fortunately, not causing any issues. Now we're going to switch fire to the Royal Oak again, because at this range I probably wouldn't be able to hit the warrior. It's going to take me a bit of time to just get into range and try to, well... Try to wear this thing down. Because this is going to take a bit of time. If I can cause flooding, great. But I don't think I can do that with plunging fire as I'm firing right now. So that means I'll have to get closer. Current range 15.3, 15.2. We're at least approaching quickly. That's because the Royal Oak is coming this way. And she, stand she still can't see me. Interesting. Interesting. Now, very important, and I didn't mention this yet. But the tiebreak, um, that's something I did mention. The tiebreak is wrong. I said the tiebreak was going to be the time. Uh, it is not the time. The tiebreak is the amount of structural integrity left on your ships. Yours and your teammates combined. So it is very much in my favor not to try and run into the Royal Oak as quickly as possible. But to just do a bit of a slugging match at a distance. And thereby reducing my chance to get hit, let alone explode. And just wear it down over time to preserve my own structural integrity. We have plenty of ammo. Royal Oak is slash has been burning all over the place so far. Oh, you lost sight of me again. Excellent, excellent. Still 1,120 rounds left. So we should have plenty of ammo. Warrior, however, where are you going? 14 clicks out. Royal Oak's burning again, but they're very, very quick to put those fires out. Orcs one. And Citadel four. Super heavy shells and increased ammo shells. Oh. That means that if I can pen that ship, there is a reasonable chance that it will go up in a flash fire. That'd be funny. I mean, the same can be said for my ships. So far, they haven't hit mine. At least, not that hard. But at this range... 32% chance to pen. Ooh! Fire on the heavy cruiser. That's not great. Are these AP shells even doing anything? You're just shrugging it all off. You're shrugging it all off. Switch to high explosive again. Because if I want to do this, I'm going to have to get a lot closer. And I'm not willing to risk that, because that means that my structural integrity will go down. I'm not willing to do that. So... Slugging match. Bring it on. 
Although they're probably... I think they can't see me anymore. Thing is... I'm not sure if I have enough ammo. I know I was proclaiming a moment ago that I have plenty of ammo, and I do. But I just went through 300 rounds, and I didn't really get that much to show for it. She's down to 68%. Those 14 inch super heavy shells are very dangerous. Switch fire to the warrior. Because the warrior is worth 5 points. So maybe I could just put her down. Chance to pen. 26% only. High explosive all the way. Just a constant barrage of fire here. Ah, she's burning. Look at that. But the warrior, like the royal oak, is probably not going to go down sheerly to high explosive damage. At least, not quickly. Now, I don't need quickly, but I do need to not fire too many shells at her, because then I won't have enough to get rid of the royal oak. That's kind of the problem. chance to hit you. Two and a half percent? Get out of here. She is starting to close in. I'm not really eager to close too much more because I know that those torpedo launchers are armed and dangerous. They can hit me at six. But they're fast. Crap. My structural integrity is falling a bit. Six hundred shells left. Five seventy on the pace. And it's not called pace because it's an Italian ship. We're just not hitting it at all. Switch fire back to the uh, the battle cruiser. We're not hitting it at all, and then I promptly hit two shells. Destroy the secondary gun. All right. How good is your chance to get flash fired? Uh, Citadel five standard shells, standard ammo, increased torps, high exp high TNT. You're not blowing up anytime soon. Real oak. What I didn't check yet is how good a Barbette is. Barbette 4. Well, there goes my flash fire dream. Because that thing is going to be fairly well protected to flash fires. Sure, she has a really high buff to flash fires. If you want to call it that. But at the same time, the Citadel 4 should put a lot of the flash fire genie back in the bottle. It's just less likely. I'm probably going to run out of shells. I mean, yes, she's down to 64, but I'm down to 450 shells. Now, there are other ways to sink ships, as you might know, which is ramming your own ship into it, but that's really not going to do very well when it comes to uh, contributing structural integrity. Time, however, is not a factor. Let's have that. Hold on. Ceasefire. Uh, I want you to join. If I can have her continue expending her ammunition, I might be able to get closer because time is not a factor. Normally, I'm battling against time. This time around, I'm not. At least not when it comes to my team score. 
So if I can just let the royal oak continue to empty her 14 inch shells on, well, let's say the waters around my heavy cruisers, then that'd be great. I just need to make sure she stops firing so I can approach. Does she have secondaries? Yeah, six inch. Considering the very modest protection I put on this heavy cruiser, I don't think that the six inch is gonna have too much of a problem penning it. What sort of belt armor do you have? 6.9 or 3.8 extended, plus 110%, so let's say seven, seven and a half inches of armor. I can easily pen that. If I get closer. Because I'm currently firing at you at 11 kilometer range. If I go to 7.5 or even closer, I can easily pen that. Even your main belt, probably. Yeah. Ah, oh, crap. Alright, we're just going to wait him out for a while. Unfortunately, the same tactic is probably not going to work too well on the warrior because she has 1800 shells on board. And it's going to take her a long time to get rid of all of those. Then again, time in this case is a resource, so I might as well use it. I will, however, pause the recording because I might be here a while, just going back and forth and trying not to get hit. Now, a little while later, I have managed to get the Royal Oak down to 376 shells, whereas the previous time you saw her, she had about 600 Structural integrity on both Urania and Pache is still very good. And that means I can now start to push in. Because the Royal Oak, unless she gets a far better firing solution, is not going to risk the rest of her ammo. Warrior, unfortunately, uh, does not have any kind of problems like that, as she still carries 1,284 shells. So my first priority is to sink the Warrior. Because she is, well, she's not that good at doing damage so far. I mean, I have had 3,289 shells fired at me. Uh, most of which haven't done any damage. 47 of those have hit. I have fired uh, with a 3.2% accuracy myself versus their 1.4. I've fired 4,410 shells. And I've only hit 141. Now that's about to change as we are going to target the warrior and we're going to hopefully put her down. It's just that even at this range my chance to pen is not that good, unfortunately. Then again, a uh, high explosive at this range can still do seriously nasty things to ships like that. At least such is my hope. It's just that my own accuracy, well, I cannot afford to waste too many shells. So if I do, I won't have anything left for the battle cruiser, and that is the real prize, with her ten points for the well for getting the kill. She's down to seventy-three. Accuracy is looking decent. Royal Oak is still silent. Any chance we can pen her with AP? No. I'm not firing a 28% AP or a 28% chance to get a pen. Ceasefire. I was hoping to split them up. But the warrior is doing a remarkably good job staying close to the Royal Oak. I think at this point I'm going to have to make a choice. Do I either go for the warrior or for the Royal Oak? And I think my chances of sinking the warrior are far better. Because I probably don't carry enough ammo to deal with the Royal Oak. Sure, I've wounded her, but taking her down another 63% using high explosive is not likely to happen. The Warrior continues to empty her 8-inch magazines on me. Fortunately, with her firing, or with my firing angle, no, sorry, my angle chip towards her firing. She only has a, an 18% chance to pen. And overall, the ship seems to be firing high explosives. No, uh, armor piercing at me. 
which is entirely the wrong choice for this particular angle. 7.2, 7.1. Wow, the five inch guns are doing damage. That's unexpected. The real question is when does she launch her torps? When? She has six kilometer range, so I'm not yet there. But it's not going to be indefinite until she starts launching those. I do think the AI takes that six kilometer range very, very close. Because ideally, if this was a manual launch, I would launch. Because I'm heading towards the ship. Meaning it's more likely that I'm going to run into their torps. Six kilometer range. Bring on the torpedoes if you're so inclined. Hold on. Chance to pen the battle. The heavy cruiser is 28. Chance to pen the battle cruiser is 32. It's the ricochet. Ricochet chance is too high. All right. Well, we still have some five inch guns that we can empty on the, the onto the enemy. Maybe still doing some damage. Ah, it's tempting to open up against the Royal Oak. You know what? Let's do it. We're going to fire armor piercing at her. Because if, if she floods, she's going to go down very quick. That's the premise. If I can cause significant flooding against that ship, I only need to pen her bow and stern. And she will start flooding. The amount of shells that I have left is disturbingly low. 35, 34. This is the prize, come on. Sink her. Flooding. Excellent. How good are you at dealing with that flooding? Auxiliary 1 engine, anti-flood 2. But those minimum bulkheads could be a significant concern for them. So I just need to make sure that she keeps flooding. Pen. More pen. Keep firing the secondaries against the warrior. I do not really want to get beyond five kilometers or closer than five clicks. Because if I do that, I very much risk the wrath of those 14 inch guns again. And I'm not really eager. Uh, the enemy did launch her torpedoes, the warrior. So that's something I have to keep an eye on. 10 to 1 odds that she launched against the Urania. There they are. So you're going to have to turn that way, and you're also going to have to turn that way. Turn to port. I'm going to zigzag back to starboard. Royal Oak is once again flooding. Seriously flooding now. Turn. Ooh, seriously, seriously, seriously flooding. 40% buoyancy and dropping. Is there hope? Is there water at the end of the tunnel, so to speak? It'd be great if I could game it out like this. Just waiting out the time, making sure that they expend all of their ammo. And then, when they don't have any ammo left, approach, flood them out, and thereby score 10 points. 23 points, he's going back up. There it is again, flooding. It's just that chance to pan this one is terrible. Only a few salvos left. Royal Oak is down to 21% buoyancy. Flooding again. 15%, 14%. 
13 percent 12 11 come on girl shit urania just ran out of ammo That means that I have 120 shells remaining. The Royal Oak is still not dead. Come on. One more flooding ought to do it if she's not going to flood just by sheer time. Oh, shit. Uh, that way. 4% buoyancy. Three percent. Supposedly she's still flooding, but I don't really see it. There it is. Another flooding hit. Two percent. Sinking. We got her. Royal Oak is done. Giving me just 75 shells to deal with the warrior. Now, at this angle, what's my pen chance? 50-50. I'll take those odds. Bring those main guns to bear. Good damage. 66 shells remain. This is gonna come right down to it. Flooding. 60 shells. More flooding. If she torps me now, I'm going to have a really big issue. Structural integrity is something else I need to look out at. Um, 83 on Urania. 85 on Pache. That is if it doesn't change anymore, but I think we got them. There we go. All ships sunk. Structural, 83 and 85. So, not too bad. A um, bit of an unusual tactic, but it seemed to have worked. Now, how many teams or how many points my team has is, of course, going to come down exactly to how well my teammate does, which is Serious Strategy Gamer. Um, have a look down below in the comment section, sorry, in the description, and you can find the links to the other guys, and we'll just have to see who builds the best cruisers and who's the best at commanding them. See you guys soon for another video.